Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So DJI has had another big day today, a lot of new firmware, and of course they launched their new Mini 3, which is basically a budget drone, a lower cost version of the Mini 3 Pro. But this video is not about that, I actually have one on order, it will be here tomorrow, so I will be covering that fully once I do get it. What this video is about is new firmware for the Mavic 3 and the RC Pro and the DJI Fly app. Basically, they've now added waypoints to the Mavic 3, and this is something that a lot of people have been waiting for. So let's go ahead here, we'll take a look at the release notes quickly first. You can see that the Fly app has been updated to version 1.9.0, so you will need to update that first, depending on what device you're using, either on your smartphone or the RC Pro. Now these waypoints are only compatible with the Mavic 3 series as of right now. So that's the Mavic 3 Classic, the Mavic 3, and the Mavic 3 Cine. You can see that the firmware number for the aircraft is now version 1.00.1000. And under the release notes, you can see it's added 4K, 24 or 25 frames per second resolution for night mode. It's added waypoint flight. It says it's also optimized the flight attitude limit and fixed some minor bugs. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at waypoints and I'll just show you quickly here before we get started. You can see we have this new option here called offline maps. So you can zoom in to any area that you want. I'll be in southern Ontario here most of the time around the London area. So you can see here it's going to show you what the size of the map download is going to be and that will change as you move the map around. Zoom in and out. Once you got the area lined up, you can just hit the download button. It does give you the option to name it, so that way if you have different areas you want to download, it'll keep it organized for you. So that's definitely a handy feature, but the big thing is waypoints. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that. Now one really nice thing with the way they've done waypoints now is that you don't have to have the drone powered on. If you recall with the Mavic 2 series when they added waypoints 2.0, you had to have the drone powered on and connected to the controller in order to create your waypoints. It was kind of a pain, but as far as I can tell, I've been able to create waypoints without having the drone powered on. Now I'm not sure if it's the same for every device, if you're just going to be doing it on a smartphone, if it works the same way. But with the RC Pro here, definitely you can do it. Now I am going to do a screen recording as well because it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing. And I do have a microphone attached to it. You don't have to have a microphone attached to it. I'm just doing that so I can sync it up with audio later on. So let's go ahead here. I am going to start a screen recording. I'm just going to move that out of the way because it will be in our way down at the bottom there. So what we're going to do to start is hit connection guide. And what we're going to do is go into camera view. And of course it's just a black screen because we don't have the drone powered on. And you can see we have this new icon on the side and that's basically our waypoints. And there's a couple different ways in which we can create points. We can use the C1 button at the bottom, but we can also press and touch on the screen and that's how I'm gonna kind of demonstrate today. So let's go ahead, we're gonna bring up our map here. And if you don't know how to bring that up, if you're brand new, you may have just a little icon like that. You just press on it, it's gonna bring up a smaller map. And then you press it again, it's going to bring up a bigger map. Now at this point, I'm gonna zoom into where I wanna create my waypoints. So I'm gonna to go to the London area here. And there's a spot that I fly at quite a bit when I'm testing stuff out, which is right there. There's a parking lot. You can see, I'll just put a little pin there. That's where I'll be taking off from. And what we're going to do is just do a waypoint around this train bridge that's here. So the first thing what we're going to do is turn on our waypoints by pressing the button at the very right hand side. You can see we get these new tools down at the bottom. Now at this point, we can just start creating our waypoint mission, but we can also load one that we've created in the past if we want to edit it or execute it. And we do so by clicking on that little kind of paper icon. You can see I've already got one in there when I was testing it out this morning. But let's go ahead here and we're just going to create a new one. Now before you get started, one thing you may want to set is your global settings. And that's basically what it does if it gets disconnected, the speed at which the drone will be traveling throughout the waypoint mission. And those are called global settings and we get to them by hitting those three dots. And you can see we can set our global speed what happens at the end of the flight, what happens if signal is lost. So I'm going to turn the speed up to about 19 kilometers. And we'll get out of there. Now at this point, all we have to do is create our first waypoint. Like I said, I will be taking off from the parking lot, so I'm going to go send the drone over this water here. So I just pressed on the screen, and as you can see, it just creates a waypoint. And if we click on that waypoint, you can see we can set it to do different things. One important thing you do want to do is tell it what you want it to do, whether you want it to record video, start recording video, or take a photo. So I'm going to set mine to start recording. And as you can see, we get a little icon underneath it that says it's going to start recording. But we can also set some other things. We can set our altitude. 
We can set the speed. As you can see there, we have the global speed set, so I had it set to 19 kilometers per hour. But if we want to change that, all we have to do is click on it, and down here at the bottom, you can just see down there it says global speed, that's what we have selected. But we can click on that and change it to custom, and now you can see we have this slider, we can adjust the speed. So you can set your own speed, but I am going to go set that back to the global speed. And there's a couple different things in which we can do here. We can set the heading, and uh, quite often you might leave it at follow course. We have options there we can set. We can select point of interest. We don't have a point of interest yet, but we can make a point of interest, and it will point at that, which I'll show you here in a second. We have manual and custom, but for now, let's leave it on follow course. So let's create a second point of interest, and I'm going to do it over here on the other side of the train bridge. You can see now I've made a second waypoint. You can see the direction of the drone. Now that we have two waypoints, it's going to follow the course. So that's the direction at which it will be filming. If we click on it, of course, we can change all our settings again. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention there, you can see we have gimbal tilt as well. So right now it's set to zero, so the camera is basically going to be pointing straight ahead. But we could tilt it up or tilt it down. Now at our second point there, we have other options we can set. We could set our zoom level, and we can actually have the drone sit there and hover for a second before it moves on to the next waypoint. But one thing I do want to show you here before we continue is we can also create a point of interest. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to click this arrow, and that will take us back to the main interface. And instead of having waypoint there selected, I am going to select point of interest. And at this point, I can click on the map again. And you can see it's put that little ready purple kind of marker there and uh, has a label of number one in there. So that's now a point of interest. So what we can do is we can go back to these waypoints and under follow course heading, let's click on that. We can actually set it to face point of interest. And we can do that to the second one here as well. So you can see the arrows have changed there. So now as the drone flies from waypoint one to waypoint two, it's going to keep that point of interest in focus. So if there's something interesting there, it's going to keep the camera on it. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to shrink the map down a bit. So again, we can continue to fly up the river, keep adding waypoints. And then maybe perhaps we'll come back around this way and then we'll come back over the parking lot. Now what we can do here, say we've just quickly made a course and we don't want to go in and set every setting. We want things to be similar like we had set for waypoint two. We can select it and then hit apply to all. So as you can see there, they've all changed. So they all have the same parameters now, including pointing at the point of interest. You can see those little arrows pointing. That's going to show you which way the camera is pointed. So very simple to create a point of interest, and you just have to kind of play around with the settings. You might have to take a couple runs at it to see if things look the way you want it to. Now, if you want to delete a waypoint, all you have to do is select it, and then click the little trash can at the top right-hand side, and that will delete that specific waypoint. Again, if you want to delete the point of interest, you can just click on it, and again, hit the trash can. Now, at this point, we can save our mission plan. So all we have to do is click on that paper icon again or note icon and we'll hit save just like that there you also may have noticed we had the option to hit save as so if you're just editing a waypoint mission and you've made some changes but you want to keep the original you can hit save as and it'll save it as a new one we can also click on that pencil icon and as you can see there we can actually name our waypoint mission to whatever we want if you've got a bunch in there and you want to delete them all you do is swipe to the side and as you can see we get a delete icon now I'm not up in the air here, so I can't execute the waypoint, but as you can see here, we have this next button, and then you would just follow the on-screen instructions and start the waypoint mission. I don't know if I'll be able to do that today because it is quite uh, not desirable weather outside. It's very hard to be a drone channel when you live in Canada this time of year. The weather doesn't always like to cooperate. So yeah, folks, just a quick look at waypoints. I'm quite pleased that we don't have to have the drone powered on this time around. As mentioned, at least that is with the RC Pro. I'm not quite sure if you're using a smartphone or the DJI RC. I haven't tested that out yet. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.